Our next speaker is Ellen Miller of the Sunlight Foundation. And uh, before that, uh, Center for Responsive Politics and Public Campaign. She's been in this business for a very long time. Um, I have to say, can we get this, how do we get this screen up? Uh, Ethan says this is nepotism. I don't think it's nepotism, but there's clearly a, a relationship. I'm, I'm uh, a, an advisor to the Sunlight Foundation. Ellen and I are close collaborators. So uh, I'm actually going to kind of start and then hand the ball off to her. Um, we'll, we'll just call it collaboration. Collaboration, <laughs> then. It's, it's a community of interest, not a conflict of interest, uh, especially if we're being transparent about it. Um, so somebody asked earlier today uh, about uh, not tr truthiness but trustiness uh, and whether we could somehow uh, signal it uh, in, in clearer ways. And uh, I sort of elbowed Ellen and I said, remember that slide we built five years ago when we were trying to uh, convince some potential funders of the Sunlight Foundation of like where we would like to get to eventually? Um, and so this is actually, this, this doesn't exist. Um, this is a mock-up. Uh, it's not very good in, in that it, is, it hasn't really been designed to look that good. But it gives you an idea of uh, a possible direction where you might be able to get to someday and maybe the hackers tomorrow can be a little inspired by this, of really collecting uh, all the relevant information about a politician uh, and um, his voting record, his campaign contribution uh, background, uh, what, where, uh, who he's meeting with in terms of his congressional schedule, uh, what he's earmarking, what kind of feedback he's getting from constituents. Obviously, some of this data doesn't exist. Uh, or if it does, it's, it's uh, dispersed, and some of it does exist. Um, and uh, I think what Ellen uh, is going to do is show us uh, what Sunlight actually is putting together already, um, and which is hopefully part of this infrastructure of uh, making a stronger immune system. Ellen. Hi, everybody. Um, I use chocolate as my caffeine um, intake a few minutes ago, so I've got sugar and caffeine in me. Uh, thanks, Mika. Um, I'm, in the interest of full disclosure, I should tell you that the other uh, co-host uh, of this, uh, this panel, Zephyr Teachout, also worked with Sunlight in the early days. In fact, she worked to develop this piece of information, the congressional schedule, which we really have now for about four members of Congress, so we have a ways to go <laughs> on that. Um, all right, so I want to show you very quickly a couple of things. I've long had this fantasy in my entire career which has mostly been in the field of money and politics, to be able to find one place where you could enter a search term like this one, General Electric, and see everything you could find out about a company, a corporate profile, what they do in Washington, what they do at the state level. And Sunlight is moving in that direction. So you would think, and most of you probably know, we have a site, and you can look at the campaign finance profile of a company like General Electric at the federal level and at the state level, state versus federal level. So that was an accomplishment to actually mash those two data sets together. And the data is provided uh, by our friends at the National Institute on Money and State Politics and the Center for Responsive Politics. Um, but that's not enough. That's the influence industry, right? So what else in the influence industry is important? Lobbying data is important. More money spent on lobbying than actually in campaign contributions. So we added this into the same data sets. A lot of other stuff that's really important that shows a corporate profile. So uh, in this um, software where I was talking about earlier that uses the uh, natural language processing software, we found that we were able to actually scrape the website regulations.gov where all of government, or 89% or something of government, puts all of its regulations online and you uh, can comment. So in this particular search, this is still looking at General Electric's comments on pending rules and regulations. This was a, um, a major uh, uh, move forward for us. And then we thought, what other data might be relevant to, uh, to a corporate profile in Washington? We thought, well, maybe EPA violations. So we imported, I make it sound so easy, uh, we imported the EPA ECHO database into this, and so here what you have is a list of the times General Electric has been cited uh, by the EPA. We wondered maybe whether General Electric or any other corporation 
um, how much they'd received in federal grants or contracts, mostly contracts. There's that information. We brought that in uh, as well. We wondered if any of these um, contractors, uh, any of these corporations had been cited on a contractor misconduct list. Uh, the Project on Government Oversight gave us their list of the contractor misconduct database, and that's incorporated. There's uh, more on the EPA violations. And then there are these things called federal advisory committees. So does anybody from GE sit on a federal advisory committee? Yeah, a lot. So National Science Foundation, 28 people sit on 16, is that 16 committees? Just from General Electric alone. So you see where we're going with this. And this database is designed, at least, to be infinitely expandable. Um, so this next site, is this Influence Explorer? Uh, this is checking influence. So right. we really want to take the information out of those large databases. And the first one I showed to you, Influence Explorer, is really something more for journalists to use. So we built a plugin, which is what this uh, reflects, so that you can uh, pull up your checking account or your credit card account and take a look at the, um, the entities that you're doing business with and see whether they're giving to Democrats or Republicans, just information you might want to have. Um, we built another website called um, Polygraphed to enable you to filter a news story like this one, which appeared in the paper today, filter it through this enormous uh, Influence Explorer database, and show you down the right-hand side the connection between the entities mentioned in this news article. And one of my longtime friends, uh, Sheila Kaplan, a longtime investigative reporter, said she founds it, finds it so very interesting uh, to see the connections that she didn't even always know were there. And I don't know if she uses it before she publishes every story, but that is the idea that, that, uh, that journalists and citizens would look to find the story behind the story. Mika, what do we have here? So this is inbox influence. So this is um, same data set. Uh, this is a Gmail plugin. You can um, put it right into your Gmail account. And anyone who sends you an email will be filtered through this enormous same database of Influence Explorer. And you can uh, get an indication on the right-hand side as to whether the person who's writing you an email has actually made campaign contributions and how much. This one actually stopped our office dead in its tracks for about 48 hours as we filtered what our friends were sending to us. This is all public information. The idea is to make this information more and more uh, personal, uh, more directly involved with uh, the things that you, um, you are particularly interested in. I think that's, oh, so this is, uh, this is the detail on this one. This is an email that uh, Mika received this morning, um, and this is what he found uh, in detail. That's um, so that's the last slide that I want to show you. Um, we have a mobile app, which is actually in development now which is a barcode scanner. Uh, and the idea is to look at the, um, to, to scan a, a product, uh, determine which company made that product, and to look at what their campaign contribution profile looks like for people who are interested. Uh, we're still, it's, it's not even in the alpha phase, it's can this possibly work phase, and the jury is still actually out. Uh, except we did scan a Coca-Cola can, and it worked on that, and it worked on a Dr. Pepper can as well. Um, so, uh, so stay tuned in terms of the kinds of things that we are able to produce that will make a difference um, on the streets uh, and putting this information easily into the hands of people uh, who can, um, can use it to, to filter and make uh, choices that they're, they're concerned about. Thanks. Thank you.